Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Mother Elizabeth Papazoglakis, and I serve as Associate Rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Friday in the fourth week after Pentecost. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 10th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. I can testify that they have a zeal for God, but it is not enlightened. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own, they have not submitted to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the lesson. In yesterday's reflection, discussion began on the issue of Israel's stumbling in light of Jesus as the stumbling stone. Paul now continues by explaining the reason for that stumbling. He is quick to acknowledge that while the Jews have knowledge of God, they are limited in that knowledge if they only are aware of what they can know through the law. His contention is that if they had known or understood the more to the story of the coming of the Messiah, they would not have stumbled over Jesus as the Christ, no longer limiting their faithfulness to trying to gain righteousness on the basis of works. Paul challenged what he called their misguided zeal. Since they did not know or were ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God, they were limited to their own righteousness instead of submitting to God's righteousness. By only seeing God through the lens of the law, the Jews were not in a position to comprehend God's infinite righteousness. Not understanding the potential of God found through faith in Jesus, they continued in their commitment to establish their own righteousness. This position was deep in their tradition, as found in the words of the prophet Isaiah. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. It is then of little wonder, then, that as Paul sees it, they did not place themselves under God's righteousness, that is, the righteousness God provides through Christ by faith. He makes this clear when he says, For Christ is the culmination of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. The point is that the law did not and could not of itself provide righteousness before God, no matter who or whose we might be. 
The foundation of Paul's argument is that Christ fulfilled the law. As Jesus himself said in the Gospel of Matthew, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Paul is further making the case that the law, in its proper place, and understanding points to Jesus as the source of the God-provided righteousness it cannot supply. That proper place is to confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead so that you too may be saved. Salvation comes through this twofold act of faith, acknowledging to God that Christ is God and believing in Him as Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, to all who have been baptized into the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, that as we have put away the old life of sin, so we may be renewed in the spirit of our minds and live in righteousness and true holiness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturday or 8 o'clock or 9.30 on Sunday morning. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings. Mm -hmm.